Hey guys, it's Coach Leo here. Um, this is going to be uh, the video review session for week two. <clears throat> and we're going to be focusing on giving goes. So primarily, giving goes are often used in a counterattack situation. Um, they're very good to catch the opposition off guard. And they'll be able to keep your momentum as well. Um, and I'll explain what I mean by that in, just in this very short um, video demonstration for you guys this week. Um, and you could also call the giving goes. Um, I know people like David and everyone from Nessa and everyone else often refer to them as one twos. So giving goes one twos work well. Um, and another key aspect is the giving goes work very well with communication. So if you are not communicating on the field, it's going to be very difficult to get your teammates involved in a one two. So I'm going to go ahead and click play. Right, so it's just a basic 9v9 situation. We have Nutley on one side here in the orange, and we have the other team in red. <clears throat> um, so this is just a kickoff situation, right? So we're just getting the play developed. So we're playing through the back right here, and obviously we're getting lots of pressure from the other team right here, right off the bat. So once we hit that wide, um, a nice give and go opportunity. I like to think of it as sort of a triangle situation. So you've got number four here. You've got number six, who's going to receive that ball in a moment. Um, and you've got this like third triangle, like a third dot, kind of like empty space here. So what's going to happen is, and this triangle, this triangle could be all forms and shapes, obviously. So uh, number four is going to play this ball to number six. Number six is going to try to hold it as long as he can. Um, granted that he's not getting, you know, too much pressure from the other team while number four tries to make a run either wide. So that's what I'm saying. So you can go here, this will be the triangle up here, <clears throat> just primarily, obviously forwards. Um, the wider, the better, obviously. I mean, we've got all this space here. We don't take advantage of it. So if we could play here, right? We can see as soon as we give this ball to number six, we've got lots of pressure from the team. So number four is gonna make his move very quickly if we're gonna do the one, two here. Right, so he gave the ball, that's the give. Now number four has to go. He's gonna make that run forward, right? So he's making that run forward right about here, right? So we're getting lots of pressure. Again, he needs to release this ball. Um, so the good thing about, a nice rule of thumb, I'd say about the give and go is a good time to give the ball away would be right now. You see how these players are about to just line up right here? So um, a good rule of thumb is, as you know, like if they're horizontal from you or if you can like straight on, that's a good time to release that ball. So another very important aspect of this with the give and go is that this ball, right? If he's number four is running forward, so this is him still running. If he's running forward, that ball needs to be delivered in front of him. If you pass to a player as he's running at the player, instead of what's called the through pass or through ball, what's going to happen is it's going to be a very awkward settle for him, causing him to slow down. The whole point of the give and go is to keep your momentum going forward. And with that pass going in front of the runner, um, you get to keep your momentum going forward, um, which catches the other team off guard. So if I pass to this person dead on, he's going to take a second, take a couple touches, and then start to sprint again. Versus if I just play that ball in front of him, he's already going to receive that ball on his way running. And he's going to catch the other team off guard here. So, And that's exactly what we do here. So we can see this ball right right into the path of his sprint. And now we're catching the other team off guard. We've got most of the team on our side of the half. Now we're transitioning to a counterattack, right? And this is a very simple situation of what the, a simple give and go. I mean, from our final third, now we're going to their final third from back here. One give and go pass here, and we're already over here. And we've got most of the team still on the other side of the field here. Right? So now we've got all the space and time. Because number four kept his momentum going forward because of the give and go, we were able to get behind the defensive line. And we're still on sides here because the ball is now behind the defensive line. Um, and I can cover this next week, the topic of offsides. Um, <clears throat> so we have the ball. Line of defense is right here, right? Line of offsides is with the ball now, so, and that's a great advantage. Now we're, again, we're behind the defensive line, but the ball is the line of offense, of, of offsides. Um, so it doesn't particularly matter that we're slightly over here, right? Um, 
and then we just look to finish in the goal, right? So that's a very simple and very, um, <clears throat> I'd say, very widespread um, example of how the give and go can illustrate a simple goal like that. And I'll just replay this for you guys so you can see the whole thing without me stopping it. So we got number four, the giver here, right? Makes a run, passes to him again, and now we're off to a counterattack already. And one very important thing that I forgot to mention is, so number four, we can see as we go back, number four is sort of a right back here, right? Right defense. And number six was a midfielder here. So um, the reason why I think communication is very important with a give and go is because oftentimes if it involves a defender and a midfielder, we need to switch positions, right? So if the defender goes forward, we need to cover him. So if the defender goes forward, number four goes forward, number six is to drop back and cover his spot. Um, if we don't do that, which which means if we fail to communicate, um, what's going to happen is it's going to leave a big gap. So if number four happens to lose this ball, um, what's going to happen is there's gonna be no one in that right back spot. And it's going to leave us very vulnerable to another counter attack. Great. And we have this. And we have the finish. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, this give and go demonstration. If you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out. Um, I'll have a quiz for the kids. Um, uploaded most likely tomorrow. Um, just a short quiz to test you guys on your knowledge. Um, if you again, if you have any questions, please let me know. But have a nice day. Thank you.